Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen Team, and in today's video, we're gonna take a look at another basic type of section that's present on most home pages or landing pages, and that is the services slash features section. So just to show you what we've built so far in this series, we've built a header with some navigation, we've built a hero area, we've built some social proof, actually a few different kinds of social proof, we've built this cool little overlap section, this logo list, and this basic content section. So the next logical step is to build a section that showcases our primary features or services when someone lands on this page. Now I like to go out and look around when researching for these videos to see what some of the more prominent sites are doing. So I did find a few examples that we're going to base our work off of. So first let's look at 10up.com. This is a super prominent agency, so you can be sure that they know what they're doing when it comes to these types of layouts. And I really like the simplicity of this section. We have three main kind of strengths that they're trying to let you know about, and they're doing it with an image, a title, and some longer text. This is really basic to build, and it won't be complicated at all, but one thing I did like about this section is this hover effect on the images. It just adds a nice bit of interaction, which I really enjoy. So I want to reproduce that. And then this will kind of act as our bones for the other sections that we'll build. So let's go over here and look at domo.com. You can see this is more of a card style layout and they do have a bit of a hover interaction and then kind of a button treatment on these links. So that looks pretty nice too. And you'll note that most of these, when you look around on the internet, will have three main kind of selling points listed in their features or services section. But this last example does break that mold a little bit and it lists kind of four reasons to choose this company for whatever they're offering. I thought this one was just different enough to provide another kind of framework for something else we could build to show you a few different techniques. Now, based on these and having these under our belt, we're gonna build a few different varieties of a features slash services section. But we're going to start with a layout based on the 10-up example. So let's go ahead and jump into Oxygen and get started. Now, I'm not sure exactly where we're going to put this yet in our layout, so we'll just go ahead and maybe slap it between this dark and light section here. And we can go up here and click Add or hit Command Shift A to open our search, and we can go ahead and search for a section. Now we're going to go ahead and add our first div here. So we'll search again and we'll add a div. We started touching on classes a little bit, I think, in the last video. So I am going to go ahead and start introducing some class-based workflow in these basics videos to kind of get you used to the most efficient way to work with Oxygen. Since we know this div is not going to be by itself, we're going to need two more that are styled very similarly. Let's go ahead and add a class. So we'll call this uh, features one because we're going to have a few different features section and we'll call it card just so that it's easy to remember even though it's not necessarily going to be styled like a card. And we'll press enter to drop that class on there. And then what I like to do is I like to go ahead and kind of scaffold out my entire layout before I start styling. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add a div, which is gonna be inside of our main div, and we'll call this features one image div. And then you'll know I'm adding classes with each element I drop in, and there's a good reason for that. I'll show you why here in a minute. Let's go ahead and drop in an image, and we'll call this features one image. Now there are better naming conventions you can use, but that's a more complicated topic for a different video. And in fact, I believe we do have at least one video showing the BEM naming convention, which is what I typically default to. Whether it's the best or not can be debated, but it is something to follow to give you some consistency. But for this case, we're just gonna be using basic kind of intuitive class names. So now that we have our image, we're gonna go ahead and make sure we have our parent div selected here, which is this one here. And we wanna drop in a text element below our image div. So we'll go ahead and type text and press enter to drop that in. And let's expand this div out so that we can see the structure. So we have our div, which is our card essentially. We have a div which wraps our image and then below that we have a text element. We're also gonna add another div which is gonna be an actual kind of decorative element. So we'll call this features one 
divider. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our final element for this layout, which is gonna be a text element. And this will be features one description. So you can see we now have a class applied to everything inside this component. One other step you can take to keep your designs a little more manageable is you can rename elements in Oxygen to make them more recognizable in the structure pane. So for instance, this we could call card and I'm just double clicking these to rename them and we'll call this image div, image div, there we go and then this is gonna be image. Sometimes you don't need to change the name, but sometimes you want to, we'll call this title. And then this is gonna be divider. And then it looks like I dropped my description inside of that div, which I don't want. So we're gonna scoot that out and then move that divider on up. And then this last text element we'll call description. So now we can see really clearly just from our structure pane, what we've got going on. Now, the cool thing about going ahead and adding all of our classes, uh, first, let me go ahead and add some content here. So we'll do ellipsum 1P. And I'm just using a tool called Text Expander, which lets me uh, type ellipsum 1P and then get all this lorem ipsum. Super handy if you find yourselves typing the same strings over and over. And then we'll call this Feature Service. So now that we have our basic kind of scaffolding laid out and we've used classes across the entire component, we can actually go ahead and duplicate this the number of times that we'll need, and then we can style them all at once. And to duplicate these elements, I just used Command or Control D. You can also duplicate using this button over here in the Properties pane. Now we can get to styling. So first we need to adjust the layout in the section, right? We need these things to be laid out side by side. So let's select this section. And note, I'm not using a class here because I'm not sure how reusable these styles will be. If I'm not gonna reuse the styles, then using a class doesn't really serve a purpose. So I'm gonna style directly on the ID, which is the default. Even if you don't see this selected, if all you see is choose selector to edit here at the top, that means you're styling the ID of the element. So let's set this to a horizontal layout. And you can see we're already kind of getting it uh, roughly how we want. Now we do want a gap as well, which is super easy to set up here. We'll just do uh, maybe a 32 pixel gap here in the properties pane on this section. And then before we jump into the styling of the individual pieces of the component, I wanna start with the card element itself and show you how to kind of make this responsive from the outset. So we know we have this laid out horizontally in the section. And in fact, we need to go back here and set one other setting under advanced layout. We wanna set flex wrap to wrap which is gonna allow these to wrap. But you can see this kind of broke our layout. So what we need to do is then set a max width. What we can do is we can go to the card and go to advanced size and spacing, and we could set the max width to a calc value. Now this gets a little bit complicated, but calc is something that's relatively easy to understand once you get what it's doing. So basically you type calc and then an open and close parentheses. Then within that you can perform kind of math operations. So you could do like 10 PX minus five PX, right? And that would give us a max width of five pixels. In this case, since we know we wanna have three cards side by side, we wanna start with 33.33%. Right, But that doesn't get us quite all the way there because they're still a bit too wide with the gap to stay on one row. So this can be a little tricky to figure out exactly how much to take away from your 33%. But in this case, I think if we remove 48 pixels, it'll get us just about there. Now that doesn't look quite perfect. We can actually reduce this value a little bit. Let's try 32. And you can see we still have a bit more of a gap over there on the right hand side. So you may just have to kind of adjust this value until you get the layout that you want and don't have extra gap on the side. So let's go to 24, 22, 21. So it seems at 21 pixels is when it kind of wraps to the next row. So we want 22 pixels here. An alternative to kind of getting it perfect is if you go back to where it's just a bit too narrow, you could just kind of center everything here and that would look fine. But if you have other content above and below this that kind of lines up with the left and right confines of the section container, 
it's going to look a little bit goofy. So I would prefer generally to kind of get that gap reduction correct. So again, we need to go back to this card, go to advanced size and spacing, and let's adjust this down. I think we found it to be 22 pixels as the perfect value. So again, just to recap, all calc is is a function that CSS provides that lets you perform math operations. You can do, you know, star for times, you can do minus, you can do plus, you can do divide, etc. And it's really handy to have this in your tool belt for times when you do need a value that can't be expressed very easily in plain terms. So why did we go to all the trouble to do this first? Well, it's for the sake of having a layout that adapts to our screen size. So instead of going down and having to adjust the layout on each breakpoint, now this should adapt pretty cleanly. Now we're gonna see one problem and that's they become way too squished when it's on a very small device width. So probably about right here, we wanna switch these to full width. So what we can do is we can just set this max width to 100%. And now we're gonna get that full width layout. So you can see down to here, we get a nice side by side. And then down to here, we start getting this full width layout on these cards. Now, another thing you could do is if you had a number of cards like four or eight or something divisible by two, you could also set them to 50% at a certain point. But then you would again need to perform that calc function to ensure that that 50% also accounted for your gap. But in this case, we just want 100% width at this breakpoint. So that gives us a nice responsive layout without having to tweak it a bunch on every breakpoint. Now, just while we're talking responsive, another option you have is instead of doing this max width 100%, you can also just set a min width on the cards themselves, which then means you wouldn't have to set any settings at all on the breakpoints, and it would just kind of overflow uh, however you want. So let's set the min width to 280 pixels here. You can see it didn't change anything at this breakpoint, but as we start getting down to a size where these cards would be squished to a width that's narrower than 280 pixels, they'll jump to the next row, which gets you this kind of layout, which for some designs may be ideal. And it is much less work. You don't have to actually set any values on any breakpoints and it will continue to collapse gracefully. So for our purposes, this will work just fine. Let's leave that and then let's get to designing the actual elements in this card component. So let's start with our image, which is kind of the most interesting bit of this, but let's set our background color to something, uh, maybe kind of a lighter purple color. Let's go here. Not quite that vibrant. Something like that should work for now. Now let's select our card and let's go to advanced typography and let's set the color to white. When it comes to typography colors, I always recommend setting the typography color on the highest level element you can get away with. That means instead of setting it on the individual text elements, I'm setting it on the card itself. And that just saves us a bunch of repetitive work. Now we can go ahead and style our image. So let's select the div around our image and let's give it a background color of white and then let's do some padding here. So we'll go to advanced size and space and do something like 32 pixels of padding. And then let's select our actual image that we wanna use. We'll just use one of these logos that I have uploaded. And you can see that looks all right. Now what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that this div has a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. Now we could do that with custom CSS, but since this is a basics video, we're gonna to go to size and spacing and just set the width to something like 200 pixels and the height to 200 pixels also. Now we wanna go ahead and center the content in here so we can choose vertical and center and center. Now we can give this a border radius that will give us that rounded effect. So let's go to advanced and borders and go ahead and set the border radius to 100%. Now we need to set the images over here because the image source is not set by class because that's not really a CSS property. It's something in the HTML itself. So that is something we do have to set per image, but you can see that our styles are being reused across all of these elements where the class has been applied. Now for this cool hover effect that we saw in the example, 
we're gonna do a couple of things. First, before we ever get into the hover state itself, we wanna go to advanced effects, transition, and add a transition duration. In CSS, there are many properties that can be smoothly transitioned from one state to another. These settings that we're looking at now allow us to define how that transition occurs. So we're saying we want this transition to happen over 0.3 seconds, and the timing function is the curve of the transition. So you may be familiar with easing, which means an animation either slows down or speeds up at the beginning or end. So what we wanna do is we wanna do ease dash in dash out so that it eases at both ends of the transition. This will give you a much smoother and more attractive effect. So now that we've set the transition up, we can now lay the groundwork for the property that we actually want to have transition. So we're gonna to go to box shadow and we're gonna choose kind of a darker purple color, let's do uh, something like that. And then we're gonna set everything to zero. Now, why did I do that? Because we don't actually want this outline on the normal state of this element. So when it's not being hovered, we don't wanna see the outline. And to add on to that, the reason we're using a shadow for the outline is because we don't wanna change the size of the element. If you add a border, it will change the size, which means you'll get layout shift, and we don't want that. So instead, we're gonna use box shadow, which will kind of just exist behind the element and won't affect the layout. But how do we get this to change on hover? That's where our state button here at the top of the properties pane comes in. If you click state, you get a few different options. Original is the one we've been working with. Hover is the state of the element when it is hovered by the cursor. And then we have before and after, which are actually pseudo elements and can be very useful, but we don't need them in this case. So let's choose hover. And now we need to choose the same color. So actually let's go back here and copy and paste that. And then we'll jump back to hover and drop that in. Now everything's gonna be zero, except for we want our spread to be some value. I think that looks pretty good, 10 pixels. And you can see how it kind of smoothly animated out even just when adjusting the value here. That's what it's gonna look like when we hover. So now that we have that set up, we can go back to the original state and see what this hover effect looks like. So when we mouse over, you can see that it has that nice hover effect. Now, one other little thing I think would make this look nice is let's go back to hover. Let's go to advanced effects and let's do transform and let's actually scale this down just a little bit when we hover so let's do scale uh, 0 0.9 0 0.9 uh, 1 for z uh, now let's go back to original and you can see that we kind of get this shrinking effect for the border instead of the border growing out from the element because we're growing the border out at the same time that we're scaling the element down which i think is just a nice effect so that covers that. Now we need to do the other basic layout stuff. So let's just use gap here because that'll make it way easier. Generally, when you're spacing elements in a div or section or anything, you're gonna wanna use gap. Now, not all elements need to be spaced out the exact same, and I'll show you how to address that. First, let's select this element, and it looks like we maybe missed a class here. So let's do features one title and drop that on. And then instead of just adding that class to each element, I'm gonna hit Command or Control C and copy it. Then we're gonna paste it in here and delete the one without the class. So I'm selecting that, pasting in the one with the class and deleting the one without the class. Now we can go back over here and adjust this size a bit. Now we don't want it that big, but let's adjust it down maybe to 22 pixels. And then this divider, uh, we want to do something a little tricky here. You'll notice that the empty div itself is a box shape basically in Oxygen. Oxygen by default imposes an 80 pixel minimum width and height to divs. That's so that you can drag elements into them when they're empty. If we didn't have that, then the div would not be visible as a drop target. But in this case, we don't want that even in the builder preview. We wanna be able to see what we're actually doing. So we're gonna to go to advanced custom CSS and we're gonna set min height to zero pixels. And because this won't override the default, we do have to add important. 
Now, usually you don't want to use important in CSS, but in this case, because we know exactly what it's doing and it's unlikely that it's ever going to conflict with anything, it's a safe choice. So now we can get this kind of line effect. What we need to do is we need to go to size and spacing and set the height to whatever thickness we want this line to have. So let's do two pixels and then let's set the width to 50% and then let's set the background color to white. Now earlier I mentioned dealing with the gap and sometimes you don't want the elements to be equally spaced. For instance, we want this divider to be closer to the title than it is to the description. So let's go ahead and select the title and to offset that gap, we can add a negative margin. So we'll go to size and spacing and we'll set the margin bottom to negative 32 pixels. That completely gets rid of our 32 pixel gap. Now the final touch for this layout is we wanna go ahead and align all of the child elements in this card to the center. Now that won't align your text to the center. In this case, I think it looks good how it is, but if you want to align your text to the center, just select your text element, go to advanced typography and choose center align. But I kind of like the left align look for this. A good rule of thumb with center align text is avoid it unless it's a very short bit of text. So let's save this. And that about wraps it up for that 10 up example. So let's jump back over here again and look. The design is obviously not identical, but the bones are essentially the same. We have the cool hover effect. And then if we go over here, you can see it's kind of the same situation. So this is a really solid choice for displaying features and services. But what about something like this with more of a card design? Well, the nice thing is now that we've built this out one time, it's pretty easy to modify it. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. And for this example, since it's just some cards, we don't actually need the image. So we can go ahead and just get rid of the image across all of these cards and get rid of that one too. And now we can start styling these in the new way that we wanna style them. So we can go ahead and add a class on top of the class that we had before because the features dash one dash card class applies styles that we want to keep, but we also want to change some other things using another class. So let's add features to card. And I'll just copy that class so that I can add it easily across all of these. Now, what changes are we gonna make? Well, we want a white background color and we're gonna wanna change our typography color, of course, to something that won't blend in with the background. And then under advanced size and spacing, we're gonna want some padding, maybe 32 pixels all the way around. And then we'll probably want to reduce this text for this particular layout because that is a bit much. So let's drop that down. Let's copy that text across to all of these. Make sure I highlight that text before I hit Command or Control C. Then we'll copy and paste it into these other text boxes. We've already created a rather wildly different looking layout with just a few minor tweaks. And that's the nice thing about building really solid bones when you're doing something like this, especially if you know you're gonna need a few permutations, is you can start with something that's really solid and then make minor tweaks when you need to. So now we'll add features dash two dash divider here and we'll change the background color to black. Now going back to the card itself, we do wanna add a border radius here. So we'll go to borders and we'll set the border radius to something like uh, eight pixels or actually maybe four. Generally, you don't want things too rounded or it can look a little cheesy. So a um, nice subtle border radius is helpful. And then this text element, now that we wanna make a styling adjustment, we'll add a features dash two dash description class and we'll go ahead and go to advanced typography and we'll center that text. And then of course, we're gonna need to add these classes across all of these elements. Or since I've already started styling this left-hand card and these other cards don't have all the classes yet, I can go ahead and delete these and then we can just duplicate this left-hand card a few times. Now everything's kind of in line with each other. Now the last bit of this example is this little text link here and it looks like a slight hover effect. So let's do the hover effect first because that's relatively easy. First, we'll go to advanced effects and we'll set that transition again, 0.3 seconds and ease in out for the timing function. Now on hover, what do we want to have happen? We'll go to the hover state and we want to apply a transform. So we'll do transform 
add a transform and we're gonna do translate. So let's look for translate. We wanna translate the X by zero pixels, the Y by negative 32 pixels, maybe not that many, let's do 12, and then Z by zero pixels. So now if we go back to the original state, you can see when we hover over these, we get this nice little lift up effect. Now for the final touch, let's add that text link. So we'll go ahead and click add and add a text link, drop that in, and let's add a class, of course. We'll call it features-2-link. And for now, we'll just do learn more, but make sure your text links and buttons have descriptive text when you're building these in the real world. Now, all we wanna do is add a nice little background to this on hover. So we'll first need some padding to give it kind of a button aspect ratio. We'll go to advanced size and spacing and add maybe eight pixels to the top and bottom and 32 pixels to the left and right. And in fact, let's make this a little bit shorter here. There we go. And then let's go to advanced borders and add a border radius similar to what the parent container has just to add kind of a design consistency there. And then all we wanna do is on the hover state, we wanna add a background color. So we'll do maybe a very light purple color. So let's drop that in, something that kind of matches our background, but probably even more light than that. And then we'll probably wanna change our text color. Let's look at maybe a black color. Now you can see we did not add our transition like we did with the other elements where we had a hover effect. So when we hover over this link, it's going to immediately add that background image. So we do need to make an adjustment here. First on the non-hover state, let's make sure it's black as well. And then let's go to advanced effects. And by now this is probably familiar. Transition, 0.3 seconds, and timing function ease in out. Now, you've seen that I had to repeat this setting across multiple elements to get them to have that smooth transition. Anytime you're doing that where there are discrete settings that are repeated across elements, even though all their other settings might be different, they have this one thing in common. You might consider a utility class. Basically, a utility class is a class that performs a small limited function. So in this case, we could create a transition utility class. So instead of applying this directly to the element, let's remove that, and you can see that our changes happen immediately when we hover, we could actually add a class called transition. And now on the transition class, we add the setting. Since we want it the same across all of our elements that are going to have a transition, this is a very safe choice, and in fact, one that I use quite often. So now we've added that transition class here, and when we hover over it, you can see the smooth transition. So theoretically, we could actually go back to this card and you see our hover effect here. We could remove our transition here, which will get us a kind of jerky effect here. Now, if we wanted to make it smoothly transition, we just add the transition class, drop that in. And now when we hover over it, it's nice and smooth. So from that point forward, once you have this utility class set up, Anything that needs to have those transition settings, you just drop the class on and it saves you a bunch of time. So now that we have our final touch here, let's go ahead and copy and paste that button or text link across to these other cards and that layout is done. So let's go ahead and save that. So the last example we can look at is this iVision example, which is pretty straightforward. Basically, it's this layout, but with a few minor tweaks. So let's go ahead and duplicate this section, and we will remove some things first. We do not want the hover effect on this. So we wanna go ahead and remove this features two card class, and we're gonna add a new one that's pretty similar. So we'll do features three, card. Now, to save a little bit of time, we can actually add that features to card class back, and then we can copy the styles across. So we'll grab the styles from this class, and we'll apply them to the features three card. Now we can remove the features two card, and we'll still have our stylings, but then we can modify it without affecting the other elements up here with the features two card class. So we'll go to advanced and grab our hover state here. And in fact, we just wanna remove everything on the hover state so we can use our red X there to do that. And now we have no issues there. So let's get rid of this, 
get rid of this. And then let's just get the styles whipped into shape for this card and then we'll duplicate them. So basically all we need to do to achieve this is we need to adjust the alignment, make sure there are four cards, and then add a little border between them. So let's go ahead and go to advanced borders and let's go ahead and set our border radius to zero. And then let's go to advanced actually primary and go ahead and set our alignment to the left. Now we are gonna need to adjust this text alignment. So we'll do features dash three dash description and go to advanced typography and go ahead and align that text to the left. And then this button here looks a little strange because it's kind of not left aligned visibly when it's not hovered. So what we'll do is we'll just add some kind of effect to it to make it look like a button even when it's not hovered. So we'll do features dash three dash link and maybe we'll add a border or something. So let's go to borders and let's set the border to black one pixel solid. So now it kind of looks like a button. When we hover it, we still get our background color. That looks much better from a alignment perspective. So now we just need to make sure we can have four of these. So let's go ahead and duplicate this one, two, three, four. Now we have four of these and you can see it's overflowing. And that's because our gap and width are a little bit off for these elements if we're going to have four. So first for this layout, we need no gap. And then we need to adjust the card max width. So let's go ahead and go to advanced size and spacing. Now you can recall up here under advanced size and spacing on our features two card class, we didn't have to make any adjustments because we're using the features one card styles, which are min width 280 pixels and the max width calc 33% minus 22 pixels. Now for this one, it's a little bit simpler because we don't have a gap. So let's go to advanced size and spacing and we can go ahead and just set the width to 25%. But then we're gonna need to adjust our min width here to make sure that it's not too wide. So now you can see we get this four card layout. Let's take a look at the responsive setup and you can see it gets a little squished there. So we'll probably want to adjust this a bit. We might wanna adjust the min width to maybe 200 pixels. Let's see if that gets us our layout we want. There we go. It does start to collapse here and doesn't look great. To fix this, all we need to do is adjust our min width to 50%, not 59%, let's do 50%. There we go, now we get this nice kind of four square layout. And then if we adjust down, we can eventually go to 100%. And you can see that kind of lays things out vertically how we want. Now you might wanna add some gap between these. So on this breakpoint, when they start stacking vertically, you could add some gap here on the section itself to space these out and that would look a little bit nicer. So now we have something that is slightly different and does collapse gracefully down, but it does require a little bit more work than some of the other layouts we did. The final thing we might wanna do is add this border between these cards, which will look much nicer. So on the features three card class, we'll go to advanced borders and we'll set the left border to a light gray, one pixel width solid. Now that's gonna add it to all of them, which is perfect, but we don't want it on this one. So to override the class styles on one instance, we can just select the ID, go to advanced borders, and set the left border to none. Now you can see we have this nice border divided card layout, just like this example here. But we improved it by not having this weird left border floating over here where it probably shouldn't be. So let's save that and we can look at our work. Let's go ahead and get rid of our little sidebars here. And you can see the first one we built, that 10 up example here, very simple, very elegant, very effective. And then the second one with some cards and some hover effects. Now these I didn't ha add the transition class to, so you can see the difference. No transition and transition. The transition effect is much nicer. And then finally, this more compact layout, which looks pretty good. And each layout serves its purpose depending on kind of the mood and vibe of the site and what information you're presenting. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that about covers how to create a basic services slash features section on your website using Oxygen. Thanks for watching.